Hi, and welcome to Hull & Hull TV. I'm Dana O'Brien, and I'm joined by Ian Hull and Susanna Popovit Montag, partners at Hull & Hull LLP, an innovative law firm that practices exclusively in estate, trust, and capacity litigation. Here at Hull & Hull TV, we're exploring the issues around estate planning that affect you, including powers of attorney. Ian and Susanna, new laws dealing with powers of attorney came into effect in Ontario in 1995, leaving many worried about the implications. Susanna, what is a power of attorney and why is it so important? A power of attorney is a written document in which you give authority to your attorney to make decisions on your behalf. In other words, it's the, the appointment of a substitute decision maker. And there really are two different types of powers of attorney, one that deals with your property, your bank accounts, your investments, or your real estate, and one that deals with your personal care. And a power of attorney is a very important document because it allows you to plan for situations when you may become incapacitated. And in that case, you won't have otherwise someone who can make these decisions on your behalf legally. Ian, who should you appoint as having your power of attorney? Well, I always uh, think of it in terms of what job is it you are specifically trying to uh, get someone to help you with? And that is either your personal care and health issues or is it your finances? And often it's different people. Uh, married couples will, in m most cases, will pick each other because they are familiar with both aspects of their lives. But it's not always the case. And sometimes you want to put someone with more business acumen, someone who's got more time to spend on the finances, and uh, that person can be your power of attorney for property. And then in respect to personal care, it may be more uh, someone with more uh, 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 understanding about your circumstances in regard to your health care needs. Susanna, do you have to have a power of attorney? What happens if you don't have one? Well, actually, no, you don't have to. And according to the statistics here in Canada, less than 50% of people actually do. Now, if you don't have a power of attorney and you become incapable, then you don't have anyone with legal authority to make decisions on your behalf. And what that means then is that someone will actually have to go to court and seek an appointment as your attorney, someone who can represent you and make your decisions for either your finances or your health care. What can an attorney under a power of attorney actually do? Well, in regard to property, a power of attorney uh, in that respect can do anything except make a will. So it's a very powerful document. It has an effect on every aspect of your life, as opposed to a personal care attorney who has only the rights to have input in regard to the health care decisions that need to be made. Susanna, what does the document look like and what can it actually do? Well, both of the powers of attorney, whether for property or personal care, typically start with the appointment of an attorney, or perhaps more than one attorney, if that's the decision of the individual. And in some cases, you'll see that it imposes some restrictions on the attorney, um, for instance, as to when that power of attorney can be invoked, whether it's only on the finding of an incapacity, or perhaps during a specific time frame, or for a specific purpose. Both of the, of the powers of attorney have to be signed in the presence of witnesses, and they are only effective during your lifetime. And so if your circumstances were to change, and as long as you're capable, you wanted to change your power of attorney, you would be able to do so. Ian and Susanna, thank you. And thanks for joining us on Hull & Hull TV.